let's take off from where we stopped in the last talk. I mentioned to you that we're basically in a race between solving our grand challenge problems and improving our ability to process information and matter. <clears throat> AI has been applied to virtually every field of human endeavor, music, transportation, medicine, law, security, manufacturing, oceanography, microbiology, government, ecology, space, and even art. <clears throat> the great science fiction writer Arthur C. Clarke said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. But we want to see what's under the hat. And when you look under the hat for AI, it's statistical and deep machine learning, task and domain-specific knowledge engineering, and biologically inspired computing architectures. I did a study of 360 different applications of AI that were curated by the AAAI, the Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence. And these are the features that I found in common between those different applications. This is the value added that AI gives us. And it's not just better, faster, cheaper. It's different. AI allows us to expand the range of the possible. AIs have been sponsored by governments and Global 1000 companies. Why? Because you get an entire landscape of applications. This is an eye chart for you, but you can actually download it off the web. Siobhan Zillis uh, has put this together from Bloomberg, and you can just Google landscape of machine intelligence and Bloomberg, and you can get this infogram that classifies different applications of AI. Uh, and it really is useful to see all the different areas that AI has been applied to. Let me highlight some of them. We've talked about Siri. And Apple makes a lot of big claims for Siri. For example, they claim that your wish is its command and that it understands what you say and it knows what you mean. No, I don't think so. Uh, David mentioned some of the dumb mistakes that Siri makes. In fact, there are whole websites devoted to the dumb mistakes that Siri makes. And Google has an answer to Siri called Google Now, and it does pretty mundane things currently. It can be used in conjunction with Google Glass, but it's still the early days of this assistant technology. <clears throat> but here's a technology a company that has been in stealth mode for several years, and it's headed up by the architect, the chief architect of the Kalo project that gave rise to Siri. Kalo was a DARPA-sponsored project called the Cognitive Assistant that Learns and Organizes. Adam Chire was the architect for that. He was the architect for Siri, and he is also the architect for Viv and Viv Labs. And what they're after is to create a global brain, and specifically, they have a really bold vision. They want to make intelligence a utility, like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, right on the desktop or your mobile device. A, basically, an application layer that connects intelligence to whatever it is you want to do. Even deep learning has become somewhat of a utility. Here's Jim Gao, not a researcher at Google, but a guy who worked in their data center. And he used his 15% free time to use deep learning to improve the efficiency of the Google data center. And he really did a great job. He went after the power utilization efficiency of the Google data center, and he didn't just use four variables with deep learning, he used 19. And he was able to improve the efficiency of the Google data center with deep learning by a factor of about 15 percent. <clears throat> so we're trying to get to one, so a power utilization efficiency of one is nearly perfect. And this is Jim Gao's work, the green area, and it's significantly better than what Google was doing prior to the optimization that he did. 
So it's really amazing that a guy who was not a researcher could pick up a deep learning tool and dramatically increase the efficiency of the Google data center. 